Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have with us a special guest, uh, T.N. Nainan, who, who is credited with pretty much shaping business journalism uh, in this country. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's been editor of India Today, uh, uh, the Economic Times, and now a Business Standard. He's chairman of Business Standard. And uh, why we have him here today is to discuss a very important book that he has written, uh, The Turn of the Tortoise, uh, where he has characterized uh, India as possibly a, a tortoise in a race uh, in the current globalization sweepstakes, uh, which will eventually triumph and win the race. Uh, so, uh, some of the insights in the book we'll discuss with him. Welcome to our show, uh, Mr. T. N. Nainan. Uh, so, you, you, <coughs> you have written this book, uh, which really sort of updates, which captures a lot of uh, the events of the last two years while looking back into history. So, so tell us, uh, it, from, a, from a first reading that I've had, uh, a large part of the book I've read, I, I wouldn't say page to page, but the sense I get is, that you're saying that India has a chance, uh, it is going steadily forward, uh, but at the same time, uh, there are a lot of things which India needs to get right, even if it wants to win the race uh, as, as the uh, tortoise of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the tail, you know. So, so tell me, what, what, are the, what are the key things that you think India needs to fix? Well, India needs to fix uh, virtually everything. Uh, we need to fix our agriculture, uh, average productivity uh, on the field is uh, way below uh, global productivity norms okay. on almost any crop. Yeah. Per acre productivity. Per acre productivity Whether is low. Compared to China or Indonesia uh, or almost any, any other country, East Sometimes Asian. it is half global average, sometimes it's two thirds yeah. global average, but it is low. Yeah. And we can therefore do very much more in agriculture, particularly when half the population works in agriculture, yeah. half the workforce works in agriculture, there is farmer distress, they need sure. more income, so you need to do something about agriculture. Yeah. And, and tell me, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we are more comparable with the East Asian agriculture, uh, uh, agriculture because the land holdings are similar to that of India's. Yeah, yeah right? one of the points I make in the book is that the overwhelming majority of land holdings over uh, 65 years or there, about since independence, mm -hmm. Um, you've seen one generation go, second generation come, now third generation. Yeah. So holdings have got divided and subdivided. Further fragmented. So the average holding is barely an acre or two. Yeah. Now you really can't make much of a living there. So uh, and that brings up the second point, which is that if people have to get off the land and work in other mm -hmm. uh, careers or professions or whatever they do, uh, you need manufacturing. And you need labor-intensive manufacturing, you have a full which is the whole, of, yeah. yeah, which is the whole make in India thing. Okay. Uh, so I go into what can work in that and what can't work in that. Yeah. Uh, so that's the second strand second. in the book. Yeah, on manufacturing, uh, Nainan, you have very nicely you've tried to explain what we are competitive in and what we are not competitive in, historically. Like you, you've said that textiles probably have a great employment, had employment potential, still have, but we've lost out. After 1995, the multi-fiber agreement, the quota system was removed, right? But in, in, in auto, you mentioned the Maruti example, how we've done well. Uh, now, it so happens that auto is not so employment pro providing. <laughs> Robotics are being used in autos much more. But textile, uh, we've, we lost out of Bangladesh and Vietnam. So, so what, is, what do you think is, could, should be our strategy in manufacturing? Well, um, I say... Uh Three or four, I think, fairly important things on this whole attempt to push manufacturing. One is that even in the most successful manufacturing company, countries, mm -hmm. uh, it is not the lead sector in employment. Uh, I mean, China is seen as a great manufacturing power. It is the world's leading manufacturing power. Yeah. And yet, only 30% of the workforce is in agriculture, is in manufacturing. And 37% or something is in agriculture. Yeah. So, um, and one of the points, therefore, I make in the book, and automobiles is the best example, mm -hmm. is that when you push manufacturing, a lot of the jobs that come with manufacturing are in the services sector. Yeah. Meaning there are only X number of people working in a car factory, but there are vendors. But the associated there are suppliers, mm -hmm. there is petrol station pump attendants, there's a service guys who, they're drivers. Uh, so there is a truck huge... Truck repairs. Yeah, yeah, truck repairs. There's a huge ecosystem that builds up around the car and no, no country has become a manufacturing power 
without developing automobiles. Yeah, sure. Every country. So uh, this is so it may not create direct jobs, but it creates an ecosystem. In textiles, the tragedy is that we have not created the flexible labor market, which would have allowed us to compete. And so Bangladesh, which was smaller than us in garment exports, is now twice our size. Okay. Philippines, Vietnam are competing. Yeah. So the easy assumption that just because Chinese wages are now high, because China has become much more prosperous, and so labor intensive yeah. manufacturing is not you, viable. You said that you do not conclude that we'll do better. Yeah, just yeah. because China has become expensive doesn't yeah. mean they'll come to us. There are other countries with cheaper labor. Cheaper labor. So you can't depend on this for a cheap labor manufacturing. You have sure. to depend on your total quantity of strengths. Strengths, yeah. And if, for instance, it takes 60, it costs 60 percent more mm -hmm. to ship a container from Delhi mm -hmm. sure. to a port and then onwards compared to it from Beijing, mm -hmm. how is a manufacturer to compete? He's got a 60% cost disadvantage on the cost of the container. Absolutely. Yeah. So there is infrastructure, there is labor law. So I go into the whole gamut of issues to say it's not a simple thing. Yeah. A whole lot needs and, to and happen. And you've also given some interesting figures that after the quota system got, were removed on textiles, yeah, uh, uh, it was, exactly. uh, trade was freed. Uh, the, and we couldn't the, compete. The expectation that India will do well. Yes. But after that period, 10 years on, uh, Others have done better. Yeah, China has more than doubled. Uh, Bangladesh has more than doubled. We have below. Uh, That's right. You know, yeah. So yeah. we we we've, we've yeah. lost out, yeah. and it was a golden opportunity, and it's still an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But if you do it right, and the other thing, uh, and the point I make mm -hmm. is that, you know, there's all this um, debate and um, discussion about the rural employment unemployment guarantee scheme, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the point I make is that if you did what Bangladesh did in garment exports, yeah. you would create as many jobs in garments as you've created through Narega. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And at double the wages. Double the, yeah, absolutely. And without, yeah. you know, without government uh, having to pay for it. Absolutely. So yeah. you need to focus on real work, real not work, make yeah. work. But in the in the end, uh, Mr. Nain, I've noticed you have uh, you've ended that chapter on manufacturing with a slightly uh, uh, non uh, sorry, pessimistic note saying that that raising the share of manufacturing uh, from the current 17 percent to of gdp to 25 percent is is uh, vaulting am ambition you say it's too in, the, ambitious. in the target frame of, 20, of time yeah. not going to happen it's not going to happen impossible and the other thing i want to ask you 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 have also expressed some hope that some of the new policies of this government uh, under make in india like like they've invited Foxconn for, has committed $5 billion to make handsets and, uh, uh, and other such electronic uh, uh, related investments. There is a criticism that the same point that you were making about textile, the real ecosystem for manufacturing of this actually, actually exists between China, Taiwan and Japan. That is true. Uh, which is because where all they the, got the early bird advantage. Early bird. So, so will the ecosystem, unless you, uh, how will that ecosystem get replaced well, here? One of the points I make is that uh, if you have a large domestic market, mm -hmm. then manufacturing follows. Okay. Because it, people want to be closer to the market. You can't sit in Brazil mm -hmm. and say, I'll feed a phone market in, okay. in India. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So if you have a large market, and we do have a large market in phones, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing will tend to follow. Okay. It won't uh, everything come together. Yeah. First, you will start with assembly. Then you will start with some uh, components. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the, it's the same thing uh, It's happened in so many other industries. When you start making a plane, what are Tata's doing? They're making wings. They're mm -hmm. making doors. Mm -hmm. uh, at some stage, in the way, the same way the China started. Sure. They started making doors and wings and parts of a plane, fuselage. At some stage, like China has just done, they, you produce a whole plane. So you're saying that th this, therefore, this, this could probably It's progressive. Work, yeah. And on the same logic, uh, this could work in the defense sector because India is going to buy a lot of defense yeah, stuff in the next Yeah, I give an example there of one company and how it got into artillery. Okay. It's a fascinating story. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so you, if your businessmen are given the opportunity and not denied and say you import everything, then they'll show the creativity and the enterprise to do it. The point is we have good businessmen, give them the chance. Sure. We'll take a small break here and come back to this discussion. Uh, please stay with us and don't go away. Welcome back to State of the Economy and we are having a, a very interesting discussion with uh, Mr. T. N. Nainan on his uh, book, latest uh, book uh, called The Turn of the Tortoise. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Mr. Nainan, you have devoted a whole chapter, uh, and rightly so, on the capacity of the state. Now, in India, there's a, a kind of misplaced debate about uh, the state. Uh, people, uh, there's a blanket view that state is bloated, so state needs to be reduced. But you have mentioned that in a whole range of areas, the state actually needs to be strengthened in terms of numbers. And uh, you, you've quoted uh, UN figures on number of policemen per 100,000 population in, in India is woefully a low uh, number of teachers, uh, number of health workers. Now, uh, how do we do this? I mean, at one level, there's also a great employment opportunity, right? It, there is. Um, uh, I think the argument that the state should be small or bigger is not the point. The point is, what does the state need to do yeah. and what does it need to have in order to do that well? Yeah. So if you say that the state is, has a fundamental role in law and order, in uh, delivering justice, in providing health care, yeah. including public health, you know, against all these uh, mm -hmm. diseases, um, in, in education for equality of opportunity and some essential tasks like that, mm -hmm. then the fact is that, as you said, uh, we don't have enough judges, uh, more than a thousand high court uh, yeah. judgeships vacant, yeah. which is unconscionable when you have... For four like, million cases pending 20, on the high, yeah, the high 20 court. 20 year yeah. delays in, yeah. in courts. Um, similarly, Accentuated by the NJSE crisis. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, the point is that yeah. whole debate yeah. sidesteps the fact that there yeah. are vacancies and why aren't you not appointing the judges? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, similarly with number of policemen, um, teachers, all, all the points you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. So, the state needs to expand to pro provide the services that it is meant to provide. Yeah. And to some degree, in order to focus on those, you need to get out of the things that the state need not do anymore. Yeah. It need not run an airline. It need not run hotels. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many areas where uh, some of the telecom companies are losing money hand over fist. Yeah. I, I have not understood why there is so much outrage over the money lost by the banks on Kingfish Airlines. Mm -hmm. and nobody looks at how much money is lost in Air India. Yeah, What's, the yeah. What's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah. And tell me, uh, you uh, uh, recently I was uh, in Bihar for elections and I found that uh, Nitish Kumar has actually invited the private sector to do the last mile of distribution to maintain the transformers and other infrastructure and apparently it's working so so the, those functions can also be uh, given to the private sector right well the so. problem is that the state capacity to deliver has become so limited mm -hmm. that we are now turning to the private sector for delivering infrastructure mm -hmm. this has actually not happened anywhere in the world yeah. And you've, you've, All you've around the world, yeah, the in physical infrastructure, roads, highways, railways is built by the state. Yeah. Hmm. Now here we are saying, no, no, PPP, okay. private public partnership. So you're saying PPP has not worked, and right? And it's led to scandal because you don't do proper contracts or yeah. somebody finds a way to get around the contract. Yeah. Uh, and then there are judicial delays and when there are disputes occurring, so projects get stuck halfway. And government contributes its equity in the form of land, and then, which, which also its valuation yeah, becomes a absolutely. scandal. There. So, um, if Nitish Kumar is doing last mile some maintenance job with the private sector, if it works well and good. Mm -hmm. But the point is the state must have the capacity either to do the job itself, like building highways or whatever, or have, at least have the capacity to do proper contracts and then monitor the private sector guy. If you don't do that also, mm -hmm. then you will get the kind of scandal you've got. So, state capacity building is essential. Actually, the next question is, again, you've quoted Raghuram Rajan uh, as saying that that India has not built uh, the right institutions, uh, regulatory institutions, to manage the sudden, uh, sudden burst in growth yeah. uh, and the use of resources. Uh, and just now, what you, what you just said for PPPs, building the right capacity. So, uh, to what extent are lack of in robust institutions uh, responsible for uh, the state we are in because it is all the scams which have occurred I mean, in the last four the, years. The whole book, uh, Why Nations uh, Fail mm -hmm. by A.C. Moglu and Robinson, which is a classic, mm -hmm. uh, points out the fundamental reason why states survive, succeed or fail is because of the capacity of the institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a proper air monitoring pollution body, mm -hmm. you will get the quality of air that Delhi has. Yeah. If you don't monitor water pollution, you will get the waterborne problems you have. Yeah. Now, you need state capacity in all these. You have to build the institutional capacity for proper regulation mm -hmm. and then let markets function. Yeah. It's a fairly simple approach, but it's a lot of hard work to do it. Tell me, uh, you know, I've always wondered, uh, you, one, doesn't, one cannot quarrel with what you just said. 
But to build the, the state institutions, these institutions will have to be manned by people. Now, if the people are not, uh, they don't work in a, in a straight uh, manner, uh, people, in, they say institutions are as good as the people who man them. Of course. And uh, if there are, if they're rent seeking uh, across uh, various levels of our society, and, the, and the, you know, middle bureaucracy, lower bureaucracy, uh, how do you deal with it? Vyapam, for instance, yeah. in Vyapam, you have patwaris, you have teachers, you have all, all, all kinds of people uh, appointed through uh, yes. you know, illegitimate means. Yes. So it, how it, do you how do you create? Uh, I, I, assuming I, that you do what you all the things that are done as you had said. How do you think it will produce the outcome? You know, there is no uh, switch that you can turn on and yeah. you get the outcome you desire. It is hard work, it is sustained work, and you have to experiment. One of the things I point out is that the Indian state, in meaning the state in the center and the state governments, mm -hmm. is actually experimenting with several different models all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing is that something that works in Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. like uh, comprehensive coverage uh, through food distribution, mm -hmm. will not work in Bihar, where 75% is stolen. Yeah. No. Something else that works in Gujarat, which has a broadly cooperative spirit, yeah. may not work in Jharkhand or Odisha. Yeah. So each state has to experiment and find solutions. With its, and within its own be, cultural context. Uh, yeah, yeah, and there may be different solutions. Yeah. But uh, in some states, technology provides the solution. Yeah. That you distance the individual from the action yeah. and you make a transparent digital environment like, in which if you have a, uh, an objection, you have to put it down in writing or in the digital thing. So. Yeah. So you can't hide behind anything and say, Baba, you give me some money and I'll clear the file. You know, it, it won't you, work yeah. that way. Like Nitish Kumar, for instance, feels that you can use technology to bypass uh, upper caste bias against uh, providing welfare yeah. to the Absolutely. lower caste Absolutely. by directly going to bank accounts. Yeah. Yeah. The whole uh, thing about gas, uh, cooking gas issue. Yeah. And you've saved some 15,000 crores by just moving it from one to the other. You can do the same thing tomorrow with kerosene which is mainly used to adulterate diesel. Mm -hmm. So um, each issue you have to tackle and see, okay boss, this didn't work, let's try something else. But you have to keep trying to do it and the results will follow. So essentially it's in the domain of the states. That's what most, you're saying. Most of it is in yeah. the states. So tell me, uh, so do you think in this government, uh, there is a really a, a serious move to bring about the systemic improvements? Uh, because you know, often the, the simplistic frame of debate is, that corruption has stopped at the top, the top five ministers are clean or the, you know, but it continues at the lower bureaucracy level that we are talking about. So therefore it needs a systemic solution, right? So there is no point in saying that corruption has stopped at the top. See, it is highly simplistic Venu to yeah. say that one election will change a country. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let us not yeah. raise our expectations to levels of dreamland, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, the, a new government has come, it has a set of stated intentions. You have seen that some areas they have cleaned up, like mm -hmm. pricing, which is at the heart of many scandals. Yeah, yeah. So Spectrum, they are doing transparent yeah, yeah. pricing. Coal, they are doing transparent pricing. You mentioned but pricing as a yeah, very important Pricing is a fundamental issue. Don't yeah. fiddle around with prices all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so you have seen some positive action. There is an intent to say we will not indulge in a thing, which I think is good and welcome. Mm -hmm. But if you don't tackle the root problem of political funding, mm -hmm. at some stage, boils will erupt again. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's natural. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, people are not funding political parties for the love of it. Mm -hmm. They're funding it very often because they expect something in return. So, sure. so you have to address that but issue. But you're right. Pricing has to be transparent and auctions are the best way. But not always. Not always. Yeah, not yeah. Always. in fact, I found that this government did not uh, uh, resort to the highest bidder gets the resource in the case of coal for power. They did reverse auction. Yes. So the attempt was to Sell it cheaper, provided the. Uh, it yeah, is but sold. they were a little unrealistic in the way they did it. So yeah. So is is that? Do you think that's a? No, I am not. I am not for a moment suggesting that auctions are the solution. You can't. Like Arun Chori says that you can't auction water. Yeah, you, water precisely. is an essential. So you, you can't say one size fits all situations. Mm -hmm. You simply. I mean, it's not possible. So yeah. it will work in some cases. It will work not work in other cases mm -hmm. where other factors come into the picture. So you have to decide how you're going to do it. Okay. But there are ways of doing it transparently, above board, where mm -hmm. everybody sees that it's transparent mm -hmm. and nobody's going to raise an issue. And another political economy issue, since you, you say that in your book also that a lot of this, uh, of these reforms lie uh, with the state, state capacity particularly. Uh, so therefore it follows that there's a need, urgent need for the centre to have uh, a very good, robust kind of interactivity with the state chief ministers. 
do you see that happening with this government? Because there is a view that this government came in the first six months, they just riled a lot of chief ministers in, in their zeal to, to yeah, there is show a, that they're politically, they wanted to capture uh, uh, several regions. You know? Aggravated contestation now in the political sphere, mm -hmm. which does not make for cooperative spirit. Okay. I mean, the GST is one victim. Um, you need a cooperative spirit, you need give and take, you are in power in the center, somebody is in the power in the states, you have to show some respect and accommodation. In the same way that Mr. Modi when he was chief minister didn't feel he got that from the previous government in mm -hmm. the center. So, uh, but if everything becomes a, you know, a fight, mm -hmm. then you have a problem. So, Do you think that Modi needs, probably needs to have a similar relationship with, say, Sonia Gandhi as Vajpayee had uh, at that time during when he was you know, running I, I the think, India, India the, government. I think the important thing is to get away from personalities, okay. which then okay. cloud judgment yeah, yeah. and focus on the issue. Yeah. And uh, I try to do that in the book because finally people have to look at the issues involved. I noticed yeah. that you you focused only on systems. Yeah, because that's what's important. People yeah. will come and go. Tell me, the most important the elephant in the room, which no political party including Modi, uh, has addressed so far, which is party funding. And you, in fact, you end that corruption chapter, say, with yeah. the party funding as an important, uh, the most important factor. Uh, now, we know that all these leading political parties uh, show more than 80% of their party funds yeah. as received from individuals that less than 20,000 denomination because you don't have to reveal who these people are. Uh, so if you have, uh, if you have uh, uh, 5,000 crores, I mean, you show 80 percent there, there is zero credibility uh, to yeah. these declarations. So how, 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 how do you deal with this? this, this how can you, you change know, this? You uh, know, once again, uh, it's easy to sit in a TV studio and offer solutions. When the fact is that all major democracies have a problem about political funding. Yeah. There have been political funding scandals in the US, yeah. in Britain, in Japan, and I don't know how many other countries. So clearly this is an issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it equally clearly, we can't go on to the present system. Yeah. So something has to change and people must attempt change. Do you think a, uh, state funding uh, is a solution? No, not when you don't have credible accounts. Because then how, how do you as a state give money to somebody whose accounts are bogus? Okay, no no a... political party's hmm. accounts are credible. Sure. How can the state fund such an organization? Okay. You, know, you have to have reasonable accounts mm -hmm. because it has to be transparent, it's accountable. Okay. But you know, somebody has suggested, that here's one solution, uh, that you you charge an uh, election cess, if, even if it's 0.3% of uh, 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 GDP over a period of five years, it amounts to a lot. And the cess is… 3% of GDP? 0.3%. 0.3. It's a hell of a lot, 0.3%. And if this is taken from the corporates… Well, that's uh, 40,000 40, 40, 40, crores a year. An election commission, uh, uh, oh, five years I'm saying. So, if election commission administers it, do you think it will work? I mean, just a, it's just a loud, uh, I'm just loud thinking. Well, yeah. you know, the point is that every politician, the first thing he does when he, he or she gets elected mm -hmm. is to file a statement of expenses incurred. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see that the majority of politicians say they spent much less than the limit and mm. everybody knows they all spend multiples of the limit. Yeah. Now the point is if somebody is giving basic accounts that are bogus, mm. how do you get the state to fund them? Okay. Meaning where is the auditing process? Okay. So the, you have to get the auditing you, process. You have to get some credibility so. to the numbers and then you can say the state will chip in. Okay. Let's hope uh, that improves in the <laughs> years ahead. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Nainan for talking to us. Uh, Thank you That's all much. we have in this uh, edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.